Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to check out this device right here, the Voyager 3 from Tiny Pilot. And if you haven't ever heard of Tiny Pilot before, it's a KVM over IP device that lets you remotely control a server or workstation from anywhere on your network. It provides full keyboard video and mouse access, along with the ability to boot from ISO images, among other features, and you could use it to easily manage systems without being physically present. What sets the Voyager 3 apart from traditional enterprise KVM solutions is its simplicity. There's no licensing fees, no client software to install, and also no reliance on Java. Everything runs through a modern HTML5 web interface, and it's built on the Raspberry Pi platform, which helps keep it affordable and also makes it appealing to anyone who enjoys tinkering. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, this isn't the first time that I reviewed a Tiny Pilot device. I've reviewed it in the past. But this time around, I have the Voyager 3 in the studio, which is literally brand new. And this isn't just a point release or anything like that, it's a major new version. And in this video, you'll see it in action. And during the review, we'll walk through the setup process, we'll be exploring the new features, and also I'll talk about whether or not this new model makes sense for your home lab or business use. But before we get into the review, I just need to give you a quick disclaimer. Yes, Tiny Pilot did send this unit into the studio for review, but as always, all the thoughts and opinions that I'll be expressing in this review are completely my own. More importantly, Tiny Pilot was not allowed to review or screen this footage before you guys had a chance to see it first. You can see the content policy on the main website, and as always, what I'm going to do is give you a full unbiased review of this unit. And with that out of the way, it's time to dive in. So let's check out the Tiny Pilot Voyager 3 right now. And to start us off, let's take a moment to clearly define what the Voyager 3 is and the problem that it's designed to solve. And since this is a KVM solution, that's probably the best place to begin. As you probably already know, iKVMs, or network-enabled KVMs, allow you to control a device remotely. They're commonly used in data centers as well as home labs, and they give you the ability to see the display of a connected system and interact with it using your keyboard and mouse. More advanced KVM solutions also support features like virtual media, which lets you boot a system from an ISO file, making it possible to reinstall an entire operating system without physically being present in front of the machine. But as useful as KVMs happen to be, they often come with some downsides. In some cases, the cost for even a basic KVM solution can be hard to justify. When it comes to the Tiny Pilot Voyager, the goal is to deliver all of the benefits of a traditional KVM, such as remote access, keyboard and mouse control, and virtual media, without those drawbacks. The Voyager supports booting from ISO images, and it also provides a full HTML5-based console, so there's no need to install Java or any additional client software. After all, the slogan for Java is, write once, exploit everywhere, or something like that. And the Voyager 3 also includes some nice extra features such as a built-in LCD status display, as well as the ability to play remote audio locally. In addition, there's also a Pro model available as well, and that adds power over Ethernet support, as well as a second Ethernet port for redundancy. That said, even the base model offers more than enough functionality for most home lab and enterprise use cases. When it comes to physically connecting the Voyager, it's very straightforward. You connect the target device to the Voyager's HDMI port, plug in an Ethernet cable, and then attach the included USB cable to enable keyboard, mouse, and virtual media functionality. And over time, as you use this device, firmware updates will be provided periodically, bringing new features and bug fixes. These updates are managed directly through the HTML5 web interface, and installing them is quick and painless. Overall, the Voyager 3 is easy to use, and it does exactly what it promises. It makes accessing and controlling a remote system simple and reliable. The software that powers the Voyager is open source and available on GitHub. This means you can review the code at any time, and if you're feeling adventurous, you can even build your own device. The repository includes a full list of required components if you want to do it yourself, and I really appreciate that level of transparency. And if you do want to check out the code, I'm going to leave a link to the official repository down in the description below. My first impression of the Voyager 3 is that it feels extremely well built. It's definitely a noticeable upgrade over the previous models that I've reviewed, and this time around, the unit features a solid metal chassis that feels sturdy and professional. And the presence of a front-facing LCD status screen further reinforces that this is a more refined piece of hardware, even before powering it on. Looking more closely at this unit, 
Around the back, you'll find a variety of ports. For example, there's two HDMI ports, one of them connecting directly to the device that you want to control, while the other acts as pass-through. And that allows you to connect an external monitor if you want local video output as well. The Voyager 3 also includes two USB Type-A ports, which lets you connect additional USB devices through the unit. In addition, there's two USB Type-C ports, one of them being used to power the device with the included AC adapter, while the other connects to the target system to enable keyboard, mouse, and virtual media functionality. And when it comes to Ethernet, connectivity depends on which model you choose. The standard model includes a single Ethernet port, while the Pro model adds a second port for redundancy. On the Pro version, the left Ethernet port also supports power over Ethernet. And this is a great feature since it eliminates the need for a separate power cable so long as you're using a PoE capable switch. Fewer cables is always a win in my book. Anyway, when it comes to setting everything up, it's very straightforward. You connect the center HDMI port to the system that you want to control, and then you attach the included USB cable between the Voyager's data port and a USB port on that system. If you want local video output as well, you could connect an external monitor to the pass-through port, which is always useful. The next thing you'll do is connect an Ethernet cable to your network switch, and if you're using the Pro model with a PoE switch, the device will power on immediately. Otherwise, you simply plug in the included AC adapter. And from there, you can access it by entering its IP address into a web browser on another device that's connected to the same network. And at that point, you're ready to start using it. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to mention something that might come in handy for anyone that's currently staring at their terminal working on a project, wondering, where did I make a mistake? If you have a Linux problem that's gone beyond quick fix territory, maybe a server that's misbehaving, storage that feels cursed, or a virtualization setup that's doing almost everything you want, I do offer one-on-one -on -one Linux consulting. This is for moments when you've already tried the usual things and you would really like a second set of experienced eyes before you lose an entire afternoon, or worse, your weekend. And the process is pretty straightforward. We hop on a session, take a look at what's actually happening, and we'll work through it together. There's no judgment, no you should have known that responses, and no expectations that everything is already neatly documented. Whether it's a home lab, a personal system, or something business critical, the goal is to get things working, but not only that, I'll make sure that you understand why they're working when we're finished. And even if you're not encountering a problem and you want to get some guidance on how to actually get up to speed on Linux, I can also help you develop a learning plan that's tailored to your specific learning goals. Whether you're looking for a career change or guidance for your home lab, the outlines that I create will help you cut through the noise and you'll be able to focus on the things that you'll need to know in order to accomplish your goal. Now, I understand that my consulting service isn't for everyone, and that's perfectly fine. But if your time is limited and your patience is wearing thin, or you just want to stop arguing with your computer, you can find details using the link in the description below or by visiting learnlinux.tv and checking out the Linux consulting section. So if you're stuck or you need guidance, then book a session and I'll help you out. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Next, let's take a closer look at some of the features of the Voyager 3, starting with the HTML5 console. Once you connect to the Voyager 3 through a web browser, you're immediately presented with a live console that shows the display of your connected device. There's also an on-screen keyboard available if you need it, but in most cases, you'll just use the keyboard and mouse of the system you're connecting from. From here, you can fully control the remote device and use it just as if you were standing in front of it. Along the top of the console, you find a handy menu that provides access to additional features and settings. And one of the first things that you'll probably want to do is check for firmware updates, which are located in the system menu. And depending on when you order your unit, there's going to be a very good chance that an update will be available, so you may as well take care of it. And installing updates is a quick process, taking typically just a few minutes. And once it's done, the Voyager 3 will automatically reboot and you'll be using the latest firmware. And one of my favorite features of the Voyager 3 is virtual media support. This allows you to boot the connected system from an ISO image, which is incredibly useful if you ever need to reinstall an operating system or run a bootable utility. And there's no need to plug in a flash drive or anything like that. The Voyager 3 includes built-in storage specifically for this purpose. You'll find the virtual media options in the system menu, and from there, you can upload an ISO image if you've already downloaded one, or you can simply paste in a URL and let the Voyager download it for you. You can store multiple ISO images at once and choose which one you want to mount at any given time, and this device includes roughly 30 gigabytes of internal storage, which is more than enough to keep several operating system installers or recovery tools on hand. Once an ISO image is uploaded, 
You just reboot the connected system and access its boot menu. The ISO will appear as a bootable option, just like a physical drive. And in the footage that you're seeing right now, I'm actually working with a PC that's running an outdated version of Linux Mint. So to give it a test, I uploaded a Fedora 43 ISO image to the Voyager, I selected it from the boot menu, and then I was able to install Fedora without ever touching the machine. And that's really awesome. Beyond virtual media, there are several other useful options available in the menu as well. For example, you can set the Voyager's host name, enable Wi-Fi, adjust various system settings, and even take screenshots at any time. If you do take a screenshot through the menu, they're going to be downloaded directly to the system that you're accessing the Voyager from, and that comes in handy when it comes to documentation or troubleshooting. Finally, the Voyager 3 includes a built-in LCD status display, which is really, really cool. It shows the currently assigned IP address, the configured host name, and also status icons for connected ports. It's a small detail, but it's a very nice touch that makes it easier to manage the system at a glance. Next, let's talk about pricing. The cost for the Voyager 3 base model is going to set you back $399 US dollars, while the Pro Edition comes in at $499 US dollars. And at around $400 for the base model, it's definitely an investment. That said, I genuinely think the Voyager 3 is well worth the price given how well it works and the feature set that it offers. It's also worth noting that if you'd rather build your own solution, you could also do that as well. You'll find a link down in the description below to the official repository, and in that repository it outlines the required components if you want to take the do-it-yourself route. But when all is said and done, the Voyager 3 is definitely an excellent product. It performs reliably, the build quality is solid, and the overall design feels very polished. When it comes to the user interface, it's intuitive and it gives you access to all of the device's features without requiring manual configuration or installing any agents. It's literally plug and play. The Voyager 3 definitely makes it easy to remotely manage systems that don't have a built-in KVM, and even if your hardware does include one, you may still prefer this device. In particular, features like virtual media are often easier and more convenient to use on this device than with many built-in server consoles. Another thing that's important to point out is in regard to updates and licensing. The Voyager 3 comes with a one-year hardware warranty, but software updates continue indefinitely, even after the warranty expires. In fact, TinyPilot has completely eliminated licensing fees, which means that there's no subscriptions and no feature lockouts down the road. Overall, the TinyPilot Voyager 3 is a fantastic device, and I have no hesitation recommending it. In fact, it's already become a permanent part of my home lab, and it's been rock solid for me so far. I haven't run into a single issue, and I'm going to be using it with my Proxmox server build that I'm going to be setting up shortly. Between the build quality, ease of use, and long-term value, the Voyager 3 earns a strong recommendation from me. And there's our video. In this video, we checked out the Voyager 3 from Tiny Pilot, and I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely had a ton of fun checking out this brand new device, and I highly recommend it if you're looking for a KVM solution. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to click that like button and also subscribe if you haven't already done so. I release new Linux related content each and every week. So thanks again for checking out this video and I'll see you in the next one.